Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect in After Effects Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the Time Effects folder. So this is a really cool and really fun one, playing around with the time and motion of a clip. So I've got a great example clip here, one of the busiest crosswalks in the world, where just the people are moving, and also a couple others where the camera is moving as well, different shapes and perspectives, and one with cars and other simple things. First up we have CC Force Motion Blur. So this will take your image whether there's blur in it or not. And you can choose the shutter angle. So the more you increase it, the more you're going to get a motion blur. So you can see on this woman here that's walking faster than everyone else, she starts to get blurry. And if you increase the sample numbers, you see after a couple samples, we get this kind of smoother blur effect. So based on the speed of things moving through the object, there will be different blur amounts. Like notice this guy's foot is a little bit more blurry, this, this lady, but people moving a little bit slower in the frame aren't as blurry. So this is just a way to force motion blur out of your image, which, which can be a cool stylistic touch. That's also similar to the pixel motion blur, another way to get motion blur from the pixels in your image without it having been done in camera. So again, you have shutter angle, which if you increase a lot will make it a lot more blurry. And again, you'd have this person that's walking faster than everyone else. You can add a little bit of pixel motion blur on there. So the two are very similar. Just the way that they blend the pixels is a little bit different. Now, a really cool one we have is the CC wide time. So this one also kind of samples different amount of frames, forward and backward you can choose. And it kind of blends an average of all of them together. So just for example, if I really move forward and backward even a little bit, what we get now is a steady backdrop in street lines and street sign but the people that are in motion become like a liquid flow almost like if you had shot them on a really slow shutter speed like when you shoot running water at a really slow shutter speed you get this cool blurry motion happening so wide time averages out through as many steps forward and backward as you can and can result in some pretty cool looking things. So experiment with different motion. Just for example, here's what wide time might look like on something with motion in the camera. If I increase forward and backward one step, again, you get this kind of as if you had shot it on a low shutter. It's really the closest analogy. Now for a little less crowded clip, I'm gonna demonstrate the echo effect. So the echo effect, you might be familiar with it from Premiere Pro. It basically allows you to blend an echo or repetition of your video clip on top of itself at a slight time difference. So I can add one echo at a time delay. By default, it's negative 0.33 seconds trailing behind, but you can increase it further so you can see how that works. And you can add more than one echo. So if I add two and three, you'll see how it gets. Now it's getting very bright and that's because the blending mode or echo operator is set to add. But if we do something like lower the decay strength, so each time it echoes, it gets weaker and maybe even lower the starting intensity just a bit, then we just get this three echo trail that gets slightly weaker as the clip goes by. So you can see it happening on all the people, all the cars, and based on how fast they're moving, like this guy's running, his echo is 0.133 seconds behind, but there's more separation since he's going fast. These guys are standing still, so there doesn't appear to be any blur on them. Along with the echo effect, I'll show you the posterized time effect. This allows you to lower the frame rate of a clip to whatever you want. So instead of just the smooth frame rate that it was shot at, you can do something like three frames per second instead to let you achieve a kind of stop motion look. So here it is playing three frames per second. We see it almost looks like it's laggy or buffering. If I do one frame per second, then you'll see it's really one frame each second. Next up, a kind of technical one, we have time difference. So if I drag this on the clip, you'll notice it goes gray at first because the target clip is set to the same layer and that's fine. So Right now the offset is zero seconds, so it's just taking the same layer against itself and showing you any difference. There's no difference at zero seconds, but if we increase the time to a little bit, now we see everything that happens different in 
0.32 of a second. So you see since the camera is staying still, the street lamp, mostly the street is not changing, but we're only getting the difference between those times. Now you can see the absolute difference. This is exactly what we're getting. And the reason you might want to do this is to target exactly only the things that are moving differently. So in a way, it kind of cuts them out of time of the video. But also, let's say I only wanted to brighten up the moving objects or let's say add a blue tint to them. Let's add like a photo filter or something just for a simple example. I can add a blue tint on top of all of them. And then I can take this layer, for example, and set it to screen or something. And now what we're getting is a tint on the time difference. So you can kind of get an idea on how this could create a unique effect. We're not tinting everything. We're only tinting 0.23 seconds of time or whatever we chose, 0.32 seconds of time. And that's just one example. Use your creativity. There's all types of reasons or ways where you might want to isolate one sliver of time to adjust it or use it in different ways. Now, next up, we have a pretty cool one. It's the time displacement effect. So similar to some of the displacement effects that we've seen in the distort folder, this one will allow us to displace the time of the image based on the information of another layer. So right now it's on its own layer. So we're getting kind of a blurry mess. But just for example, if I create a new solid layer and let's say I add a gradient ramp on that layer. So just black to white. And let's just do like a horizontal gradient like so. If I choose as the time displacement layer, that layer that we gave it, and make sure I also choose the effects and masks to take those into consideration. Now you can, we can create an effect where the white part of the gradient, so everything that's white will displace and then gradually as it goes over to black, there will be no displacement happening here of the time. So in this way, we can create unique effects where only as things pass on the right side of the screen do you get some weird distortions starting to happen. So you can see exactly how that matches up to this gradient. Everything's fine and normal here. The entire clip is kind of getting processed through that gradient. If you're familiar with the term slit scan effect, this is one way to achieve that. And not only can you just do it on a static layer, you can also animate this layer and have the animation going on while you're doing the effect. Lastly, we have the time warp effect. This allows us to adjust the time and speed of a clip and create some really smooth artificial slow motion. So if I was to do this at like 25 speed, for example, we get this really cool slow motion that's kind of blending frames in an artificial way to make it look like slow motion. See regular speed, here's with the slow motion, the bike is going super slow but it's also very smooth because of the way this is blending frames together. So you have lots of details to tune it and adjust the blur settings. Alternatively, you could also do really fast motion as well and adjust all the types of motion blur or blending of that or cropping as well. So here's the time warp to be faster with some blur. You see it's like we sped it up and you have plenty of fine tuning adjustments in here. So that's a basic look at everything in the time effects folder. Really cool and fun stuff in there. In the next video, we're also gonna be taking a look at another fun effects folder, which is transition. So if you're new to my channel, you can subscribe to stay tuned for all of my new videos and playlist. And in the next episode of this playlist, we're gonna be taking a look at the transition folder. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.